Hi there, and thanks for joining me on another video. Now, the images that you've just been looking at there at the start of this were the seafront down at Dinas Dinfla, just south of Carnarvon, and that sort of shows you uh, how windy it is at the moment. We've had a storm blowing through overnight, and I'm just sort of in the tail end of it now. Uh, it's uh, it's a bit sheltered where I am. I'm in uh, Camorthin, which is uh, the valley just above Blyne of Fistiniog. And I've come up to take some images of some slate mine ruins and some waterfalls, as well as general mountain scenery. So I'm hoping the forecast is right because it says the wind should die down uh, just after sort of 12, 1 o'clock ish. So hopefully that will ring true. Otherwise, there's no way on earth I'm going to be able to set a large format camera up without everything blown away so fingers crossed and uh, we'll make our way slowly up to the plateau where this waterfall and the slate mine ruins are. Currently taking shelter in a, an old chapel that's uh, on the track towards one of the mines which was used by the, the miners for, for services. It's a bit of a ruin now but it's offering some nice protection from, from the wind at the moment so thankful that's here otherwise it'd be a lot colder and probably impossible to get any kind of video with decent audio on it so I'll uh, make my way further up in a bit and we'll see you at the top. The chapel known as Capel Gaulan has sadly seen better days but it is the perfect place to take in the splendour of this valley. There's an air of loneliness here and the setting is both majestic and sombre surrounded by imposing mountains. Walking here from Tanigrizia in foul weather would have been testing, especially so for the children attending the Sunday school which was held here. It must have been a warmly welcoming refuge. Right then, I've arrived at uh, the remains of the Conglog slate mine. This is, uh, this is the mine with the four open chambers that you could see while I was taking a rest down at the, uh, at the chapel. There's some interesting remains here there's some what look like accommodation barracks some machine machine shop remains you can see the waste tips for the Konglong mine just behind these uh, large slate turrets that would have carried a water course in the past I believe for, probably for pumping purposes and then if we swing around you can see the the colossal slate tips of the much bigger Rosseth mine and uh, we'll be going up and exploring those in a, in a little while Okay, well, I finally made it to the to the top of the of the plateau. You can probably hear the waterfall in the background, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But what I'll do before that is just to give you a a quick scene set of the uh, of the plateau here with the uh, slate mine ruins, because it is uh, absolutely fascinating. So arriving at Bulk Camorthan, you get the first view of this impressive mine. From the left, the two accommodation blocks can be seen situated at the edge of the huge waste tips with the mill across to the right. This is level 9 of 14 floors in all, the first of which is at 1800 feet further up the hillside. The mine boasted around 170 chambers from which slate was extracted until the mine ceased operations in the late 1940s. After the mine closed, the mill was dismantled and most of the equipment was removed. However, some items do still remain and can be seen as you walk through the ruins. Right then, back to the waterfall. So you can see the river cutting its way through the scene here. And just where it drops down out of shot here, this is where I'm going to set the camera up. I'm just going to carefully wander down to the edge because you can see how it's, it zigzags down and it looks quite interesting. And the nice thing is the rocks are really dark as well. So that should make for a nice contrasting image. On this trip I'm trying out a film stock I've not used in decades and then only in 35mm. I'm using Ilford FP4 Plus this time and today was set to be black and white only. You'll also notice I'm using a spot meter for the first time here too and I'll perhaps talk about the move to this type of meter in a future video. Right 
Right then, I've set the composition up. You can probably just see the camera uh, behind me in the, in the background. I've gone for a, a portrait orientation for the, uh, for the image. So I've got the, the waterfall dropping down through, through the image quite nicely. And I've got this uh, zigzag that I, I showed you as a core part of the image as well. And then there's uh, crags rising in the background above where the cascades turn into a flat river. I wasn't sure on the shutter speed in terms of the smoothing of the water so I took a few test shots on my digital camera and settled on one second at f32. The original exposure was metered from the dark rocks and then placed on zone 3 by underexposing by two stops and adding on the filter factor for the yellow filter I was using. Okay, that's the first uh, shot of the day in the bag. So I've packed everything up and I'm going to wander over to the other side of the valley where the uh, mine ruins are and have a go making another image. To properly see the layout of the surface works, a little bit of elevation is needed. So I headed up the grassy bank behind the mill to the right of the large waste tip, as this provided a good view over the mill and over to the barracks. To start with I was going to use a line of moss covered boulders as a lead in line in conjunction with a 90mm lens for a wide view but I was undecided on the results so I used an app on my phone to cycle through the views offered by my two lenses which helped me make a decision. So I've got this picture set up, I've gone for a 150mm lens for this one. Uh, I did try the 90mm but it, it was a bit too much of a wide angle shot and the buildings were losing their place in the, in the scene by being a bit too small. So 150mm lens it is. I've got an aperture of f22 and a shutter speed of one second for this. Now the meter gave me half a second but I've got a yellow filter on the front which has got a, a filter factor of one stop. So one second f22 and I'm just waiting for the light to catch the, the top part of the ridge of the mountain in the background which it is doing every now and again uh, but it's not going to light up the the buildings there's too much there's too much cloud behind me but that's fine but it would be nice if the if the mountain in the background would light up so I'm just going to hang around here for a bit and wait till the light does its thing and then I'll take the picture. I've got two photographs in the bag from today's trip hopefully and uh, I'm going to start heading back down to the car now because we're starting to lose the light and it'll make uh, photography with a low ISO film quite difficult so uh, I think uh, that's a wrap for today but once again thanks for joining me and if you uh, if you'd like to consider subscribing that would be excellent and don't forget to hit that uh, bell notification so that way you won't miss any of my future videos. Well, with that, I'll, uh, I'll start making tracks down and hopefully see you in the next one.